people talking about alcohol usually tend to be thinking about um like a party or just relaxing, sitting back. Um, not uncommon, just you know, have a drink or two, or watching TV after after working all day just to relax, or going out in a social situation like going out to the bar and drinking, or going to a party and drinking. It's usually the main things I associate alcohol with. I think most people are doing it, and a lot of people say it's wrong. Those people who say it's wrong, a lot of them do it anyway. Um, I don't know. I think maybe. I think there's a two-faced attitude towards it a lot of times. I think most people, if you ask them how much they drink, might tone it down a little bit. Especially people in certain positions. Just not to talk about how much they drink. It might be someone embarrassing or, you know. Because, I mean, no one, no one wants to be thought of as having a drinking problem. It's got to be more than just the booze, because if you ask, it's, it's what... It's what the drunk person is doing, not what the alcohol is doing. It's more social than anything. It's nice, you know, to get out of work and be able to go somewhere and have a couple of drinks with your friends, you know, or go out on a Saturday night, you know, and catch a good buzz, do whatever, and, you know, it's fun, I think. I think that alcohol, uh, unfortunately, alcohol is a very... Uh, successful medication in the initial f first few years sometimes. Uh, it works. If you have anxieties and you cannot speak with more than three people at the same time in the room, if you have a drink you are more comfortable. I, mean, I you know, treated uh, executives who have to have team meetings at nine in the morning and to show up in a meeting with 20 people is terrifying for them and alcohol works. They have one one shot and they are fine. I think it's because people are looking for ways to escape things and alcohol is just a easy, ready um, way to do that. And alcohol, I think that in general, wouldn't it wouldn't be as popular if it didn't have that effect on people in general where they lose their inhibition. When I'm drinking, it's a good excuse to be a little bit of an asshole. Just, just a little bit. It can be a little bit stupid and uh, People are just like, well, man, he has been drinking. I'm just like, yeah, I've been drinking. You can let loose and cut back and not just be so stressed out. And so many people around here are stressed out that, I don't know, that's why I can see why there's so many people drinking all the time. My dad always has a beer when he comes home from work, and that was always sort of a symbol to me. That's what you did when you came home from work. And now that I, you know, have a beer when I come home from work, I know what that actually means to be able to sit down and have a beer when you're done with your day. It's, I mean... You can't really substitute too many things for it. It's just a nice, relaxing feeling. My dad was an alcoholic. He is an alcoholic. He's why my parents got divorced, technically, but I think it was probably more than that. He would ply us with alcohol. I mean, as soon as we came of age, when we came home, he'd say, do you want a drink, etc." You know, sometimes we did, sometimes we didn't. Mostly we took it, I think. Um, but he would say, well, you don't have to drink as much as I do. Statistically, it is fairly clear that a son of an alcoholic is five times more likely to become an alcoholic than a son of a non-alcoholic. And they did some very good adoption studies where uh, children of alcoholics were adopted by non-alcoholic, not drinking parents, and yet they became alcoholic. My father drank beer a lot of nights of the week, but he never got drunk. He never acted like an asshole because he was drunk. and. I mean, that's the way that it was introduced to me. I guess even if I inherited a gene to be an alcoholic, I think nature has a lot to do with, like, your coincidences, what you do with your genes. Maybe you can affect it, I guess, too. I would, I would generally blame the person, though, I guess. I would say if you have a problem with alcohol, blame yourself. It's a genetic thing that you, it do, the alcoholism, whatever, does run in my family, so it's definitely pushed to me and my sister's you know, if our parents see us heavily drinking for some strange reason, it's always an issue that's pu pushed in our face that, you know, it's not something that they want us messing around with so much. Uh, I don't drink because my dad's an alcoholic. So, and he has been since I've been born. So there's a, there's a sense of it that I don't like. Um, 
So I chose not to drink uh, around freshman year and stuff when he first went into rehab. My brothers, of course, picked up the flag and started drinking quite a lot in college. Um, and it was treated with humor as a funny thing uh, when people got, in, in my generation anyway, when people got too drunk to manage things. A lot of people start drinking because of social pressure, because, you know, to fit in or someone says here, you know, drink, don't be a pussy, come on. When I was growing up, I always saw everyone who was older than me drinking, talking about parties, and like, you know. And when you're growing up, you got hormones racing through you, and you're hearing about these drunken keg parties where people are hooking up with, like, so-and-so and so-and-so, and so everyone wants a piece of that action at some point. It's just like a cycle, you know, that's what, like, everyone before did, so that's what everyone after is going to do, you know. I vi went to visit my sister Katie at college, and uh, she was in a play, and there was a cast party, and... We went. I went to the cast party with her after, and they passed around a bottle of um, I don't know what it is. There's a name for it, but it's like vodka. And they put tons of sugar in it, tons of limes in it. They shake it up for like half an hour. They pass it around the party, and everybody shakes it up, and then you drink it. And they pass it around. And I loved it, and I drank the whole thing. Not the whole thing, but I was died. But I drank it, and I puked. Two hours later, off the back porch, and Katie gave me a bagel. That's the first time. I think I was like 13. I was working at a restaurant, and they actually served beer and uh, wine. And a lot of us were all, we were all pretty much 16, 17, 18 years old. So I mean, when you got a keg at work and your supervision's the same age as you are, it's really easy to do. I was with older people. They were like people that I worked with. My first summer job were like early 20s. And instead of going to the bars, they'd sometimes just get a bunch of booze and I'd hang out with them and listen to music or watch movies and drink and smoke pot. And then I wasn't allowed to hang out with them anymore and my dad found out. So according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, which is like the Bible of psychiatry, uh, there are two subcategories of alcoholism. One is called alcohol abuse and the second one is alcohol dependence. Uh, alcoholism is really synonymous with alcohol dependence. I really, I think, first became aware that the label alcoholic might be applied to somebody in my family. Uh, I was probably in high school. Before that, I just thought, oh, God, Dad's drinking again. In, in a way, I didn't label it. The alcohol abuse is the earlier stage in which a person uses uh, alcohol despite of the fact that there were negative consequences of drinking. Definitely like hooking up with people they shouldn't, sometimes not using protection, pregnancies, STDs, stuff like that. Stealing cars, stupid stuff. You do stupid stuff when you get drunk. We'd lose a kid maybe two a year to drunk driving. When he drank, he would just um, like sleep all the time and pass out on the couch and stuff. So it wasn't like he was violent or anything, but he just wouldn't do anything. So he was skipping work a lot. He couldn't really keep a job, and he drank a lot. And my mom just didn't deal with, didn't want to deal with him anymore. And it just uh, ruined his business, um, made his family life an uproar, um, and. Uh, Ruined his health. Like in the parts of the movie where the music's playing, all the hard work's getting done in three minutes. He never. He thought it, the hard work probably think it would be like that, and it never was. He wanted the glory without the, without the elbow grease, and he never really got it.